This is my current scanning setup, which costs 250 euros for the flatbed scanner, 70 euros for the scanning software, 15 euros a month to access to Adobe's Creative Cloud and 100 euros for the negative conversion software, so a total of 435 euros and with which scanning one image takes this long. And this is the setup I'm going to use today, which costs 99 euros for the Nomography Digitalizer Scanning Kit and some freeware on your phone. And scanning one image with this setup takes this long. Obviously, you will of course need a phone, but most of us have a smartphone anyway, so we won't count that into the budget, since we also did not count in the computer in my current setup. So this setup is way cheaper and also way faster than my current setup and maybe even the fastest and cheapest way to scan your film. However, of course, the important question is, is it any good? And this is what we are trying to figure out in this video. For disclosure, this will be a little review about the Lomography Digitalizer Max, which Lomography kindly sent me to try out. However, this is not sponsored, I am not paid and Lomography will not see the video before you, so you can definitely count on my honest opinion and trust me, I am very picky when it comes to scanning. So first up, let me introduce you to the setup. The Digitalizer Max is a scanning kit, which basically is a pair of film holders, which comes with several masks to scan 35mm with or without borders, as well as medium format film. It also comes with a built-in light source, which is pretty cool because you don't have to buy one separately. Further, it comes with a base plate, which you can use for precise movements to get everything leveled, as well as a clamp for your phone, so that you can attach your smartphone and use it as a scanning device. You don't have to use a phone as your scanning device, but you can just as well use something like a DSLR or DSLM, which will definitely also increase your image quality when scanning. However, I think not everybody has a camera with interchangeable lenses. For example, I myself don't even own a macro lens, so I decided to do this test indeed the the cheapest way possible by using a phone since pretty much everybody nowadays of us has a smartphone. Also I am kind of doing the hardcore test here since my phone is from the stone ages. It's an old iPhone 7 I got used I think in 2017 so if these scans with this old beast will be any good I am sure that everybody out there who just has a slightly newer phone than I do will definitely get 100% better scans than this. So, to set up the digitalizer, all you have to do is place the film mask with the built-in light source onto the baseboard. You can either power the light source with two AA batteries or with a micro USB cable and I haven't found any differences in the strength of the light source between these two options. The baseboard is rather heavy and feels very sturdy and it also has these Scandalax adjustment pieces attached to it which makes it easy to frame and align your negatives. If you want to scan medium format film in, this is all you need and you can start scanning by inserting the film strip. If you want to scan 35mm film, you can use this film holder with a built-in transporting system and spirit levels. These two film holders are made of plastic and feel less sturdy yet still high quality and they attach via magnets which feels very satisfying to use. This kit also comes with several film masks. This one for regular 35mm images without the film border and this panoramic diffuser. It also comes with a 127 film mask which honestly I had no use for because who still shoots 127 film these days? I mean if you do you are a unicorn and a very cool person so congratulations! And if you want to scan 35mm film with borders, you simply use it without any mask. All you have to do now is to insert the film, advance the negative strip and take pictures of the frame. I found that it makes sense to bring your phone camera as close as possible and use the digital zoom on the camera rather than cropping later and also use a 3 second delay for each shot to reduce the shake. To convert the images I will be using a free smartphone app and you can use whatever app you like but I would advise you to look for something that also has tone curve adjustments in the app. So the app that I will be using is called Snapseed, hashtag not sponsored. All you have to do now is invert the curve and I think it makes things easier if you kind of let the curve start where the histogram ends so that you get a little bit more depth in the images and don't have to do as much color adjustment. Then you only have to tweak the settings a little bit, add some contrast, adjust the exposure, also adjust the white balance 
add some sharpness and in some apps like this one you can even get rid of the dust and tada there you have your smartphone scan and here are some results I got with this exact setup when scanning. So you will see some images in 35mm, 120, black and white and color. To get a better ground for comparison, I also scanned in some of the images with my flatbed scanner and also got some scans from the lab, so you have a variety of results to compare the digitalizer and phone scans to. And little spoiler alert, I think they are relatively easy to spot. It is time for a conclusion and what can I say, this setup is indeed one of the fastest and also one of the cheapest setups to scan in your film. However, surprise surprise, it might not particularly be the best one. But before we elaborate on this, I think it's important to note that we actually should conclude two separate topics. Firstly, I would like to conclude my experience with the hardware, namely the Lomography Digitalizer Plus and Max. And secondly, my experience on the scanning method, namely scanning film in with a phone. And first up, regarding the Lomography Digitalizer, I have to say that I was really positively surprised because I think that this piece of equipment feels very high quality, very solid, especially for the low price of only 99 euros. I think it's really easy to use, the advancing mechanism feels super smooth and because of the magnets it's really foolproof to use, especially for people who might not be as experienced when working with something like film holders. And I personally also like when companies don't take themselves too seriously but make it fun as well, so I really like the funny texts on the individual pieces. And what I also appreciate is the small and compact size because you can easily just put it on a table without it taking up too much space or you can put it in a drawer which is a big plus compared to something big like a flatbed scanner. One of the major downsides I found when using this kit was that the 35mm film holder sometimes had a hard time grabbing the end of the film on the other side, especially if the film was a little bit curved. So this kind of slowed down the process a little bit because I had to push in the film to make it grab. And also this made it really hard to scan in the first and also the last frame on each strip. I have to say though that I used um, pre-cut film from my archive which I cut into strips of five or six images per strip. So it really makes sense if you developed your film that before you sleeve it away to scan it first because that way you will only have to fill it in once and can scan in all of your 36 exposures in one go which is really convenient. Another slightly annoying thing I found were reflections inside of the film mask when scanning in 120 film. And I am not sure if I did something wrong, but at least in my experience I found that the inside of the 120 film holder is out of a shiny kind of plastic, which resulted in the reflections of my negatives on the edges. And um, yeah, this kind of made it really hard to scan in the image and also forced me to crop in my image a little bit more than I would like. So if that's not my fault, but if this is indeed a problem of the material, I think it would make sense to maybe make this piece out of a matte plastic instead of a shiny one for future versions to avoid these types of reflections. And now secondly, let's talk about my verdict regarding scanning film in with a phone. Well, I have to say the process was definitely undefeatably fast because I never experienced such a speed when scanning film. 
but of course the image quality was not the best but I also have to say it was not terrible especially regarding the age of my phone. I think it is a good solution for people who don't shoot enough film to justify the purchase of something like an expensive flatbed scanner but who shoot enough film to not want to spend money on sending your rolls to a film lab all the time. So I think something like the Lomography Digitalizer in combination with scanning with a phone is a really good middle ground for people who don't shoot film too seriously but want to have their images kind of fastly available and don't care too much about the image quality but maybe only want to post it on social media. The image quality is far from being good and I personally would never print an image of one of these scans but I have to say that I think I would feel comfortable to post an image that I scanned in with my phone on social media. Also for people who prefer higher resolution scans I think this might still be a useful tool because instead of scanning in all of the images with a flatbed scanner this might be a good solution to kind of get a quick overview over all of your images just scan them in with your phone really quickly do a quick conversion and then later decide which images are worthy enough to spend almost three minutes on scanning with the flatbed. And one last thing as I said, I don't own a macro lens, but I do own some extension tubes, which I used in combination with my Sony a7 II and a 50mm f1.8 Sony lens to get an idea what kind of results I could expect when using the Lomography Digitalizer in combination with a proper camera, even though I know that the extension tubes do not compare to the quality of a proper macro lens. And I have to say that I think the results turned out really decent, so the Lomography Digitalizer definitely made me consider upgrading to a proper macro lens for my Sony a7 II to also finally speed up my scanning process. And last but not least, I would also be interested to hear about your thoughts. So please let me know what you think about the Lomography Digitalizer and also what you think about scanning in with a phone. And also please let me know what kind of setup you are currently using to scan in your images. Write that down in the comments down below. And that said, I would say thanks for watching and see you in the next one.